EGD, esophagogastroduodenoscopy, is the EGD here. I have an alert, alert, alert. Gag reflex must return before PO fluids can be given afterwards. Okay, how do you know they have gag reflex? Well, if you're going to do this with the textbook Inglex world, you're going to stick a tongue depressor down their throat and make them gag. Now, in the real life, you just have them cough and swallow. Everything goes, oh, good, good, okay, but give them fluids. Okay, uh, so the EGD is just a scope down the throat is what a lot of lay people say it is. Scope down the throat, we want to look at um, maybe they're having reflux a lot and just stomach upset and going to go get an EGD done by a gastroenterologist. They're going to give you a little bit of sedation, put the scope down and take some biopsies, maybe check you for um, H. pylori or something, see what's going on. Maybe you got a hernia. Okay, so we're just going to do some visualization. Maybe you have cancer, I don't know. Um, Pre-procedure, NPO, because we don't want to risk aspiration. NPO after midnight or at least four hours will receive a sedative. A local anesthetic spray can be used um, or a gargle for the throat, which numbs the gag reflex altogether. So if you're going to watch for a gag reflex afterwards, that's really important to know if they did receive a uh, anesthetic spray and the hurricane the spray we used in the hospital was the hurricane spray is what it's called I don't know why it's called that because you I mean you're gonna go to sleep like a baby um, but anyways um, so what are we gonna do now the stomach the, the patient is placed on their side and the scope is um, introduced through the mouth looks at esophagus stomach in this first part of the small bowel the nurse will monitor vital signs, respirations, airway, pain and discomfort, level of consciousness. Most of the time, nurse anesthetists will assist with this procedure because they will be sedated. For a post-procedure, post-sedation precautions. They cannot dry the same day as sedation. Monitor for complications and preparation. So that would be excessive pain, fever, um, swelling, watch for the return of the gag reflex, and the sore throat is absolutely normal. We did just put a scope right past the back of your throat, and that can be um, uncomfortable. So definitely sore throat is normal. Okay. You can have PO fluids um, as soon as your gag reflex returns, and your level of consciousness is back to normal limits. Colonoscopy. Okay, for health promotion and maintenance. It is recommended that everyone age 50 and up get a colonoscopy. Okay, now it is to detect cancerous lesions of the colon, so colon cancer. So after age 50, it's recommended to get your first colonoscopy. Depending on what is found in that first colonoscopy determines when you need to come back. If, you, if they find polyps, depending on what kind, your return may be three to five years. If you're clean and there's nothing there, usually they give you a 10-year return date to have another one. So it is preventative uh, diet, prevent, preventative procedure that is recommended. So make sure you know that that um, age 50 and up should receive one. No, no one should receive an annual colonoscopy. We can't we can't do that annually. It's, there's too much risk involved to do that annually, and it's very expensive. Okay, so with a colonoscopy, we do have a risk of perforation. We are going to put a scope in the anus and go through all of the parts of the large bowel um, and then a little, maybe a little bit of the ileum to do an assessment. So with this procedure, pre-procedure, NPO after midnight, they will receive a sedative for the procedure, not before, but they will receive it during. Bowel prep is super important. Colonoscopy, bowel prep, they must. You have to do it exactly. All the instructions, all the liquid. Yes, you have to drink that whole gallon. Yes, you have to drink it. Yes, yes, yes. You have to drink all of it until your bowels are clear. You have to just drink all of it anyways. Okay. Um, the purpose of the bowel prep is to clean out the bowels so the bowels can be visualized. If there's poo in there, you can't see nothing. Okay, um, no red, purple, or blue drinks. Well, that makes it look like blood when they go to do the colonoscopy. 
those things appear to be like blood. So no red, purple, or blue drinks. They can have like lemon lime stuff, uh, yellow, green stuff is okay, orange stuff is okay, but no red, purple, or blue. A medication considerations would be, do you need to stop your Coumadin for five days before your procedure? Because there is a bleeding risk also if they take out polyps. So alert the physician if there's any medications that need to come um, to be questioned on whether or not they need to stop the medicine and put on, them on something different um, for the time being. Or either are they on aspirin because aspirin is a big a bleeding risk factor. So do they need to hold their aspirin for a week before the procedure? Do they take a lot of Motrin and make sure they don't take any Motrin for a week before they have their procedure? Are they on kava or herbal supplements that cause bleeding? So it's mainly uh, bleeding precautions for medications. Okay, so during the procedure, is this exactly the same for monitoring as the EGD? Afterwards, um, is a little different, uh, definitely post-sedation. They'll have more sedation for the colonoscopy than they would an EGD because it just lasts longer. Monitor for complications and perforation. So perforation would be a sign and symptoms of peritonitis. So if the bowels are perforated, the patient's heart rate may increase. They will become a very distended abdomen and bloated, may develop a fever later, um, will complain of pain, um, and then they will not have any bowel sounds. So bowel sounds will be absent. After a colonoscopy, it's very common to have a lot of gas and gas can be painful. So have the patient pull their knees up to their chest and tell them to let it loose. Let it all out. They have to get the air out if they want to feel better. Um, and then watch for bleeding if polyps are removed. I've had patients come back for polypectomy bleeds so they've taken polyps off and then they come back like a day or so later with this with this bleed from having the polyp taken off. So the patient needs to know that a few spots of blood is okay if they did a polypectomy. 